Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to Mars, potentially our second home in the solar system. Uh, I mean, assuming of course everything goes well for this whole Elon Musk SpaceX exploration mission. But today we're actually going to be talking about some really groundbreaking research that might redefine our understanding of the history of Mars. The ancient Mars, which we for many years believed looked like this, might have been entirely different. So let's talk about this and welcome to Wadame. Now, first and foremost, this is really how science works. You cannot blindly believe in a single discovery or a single assumption. Once we have enough evidence that Mars wasn't like this, and once this evidence is strong enough, the new scientific hypothesis has a chance of becoming a theory and then becoming a fact, assuming of course everything goes well. And when it comes to Mars and Martian history, right now we just have a lot of models and a lot of theoretical assumptions. Nothing is really a fact. But the recent paper that just came out in Nature magazine, that as always you can also find in the description below, really presents a pretty strong argument against this. The, I guess in some sense, liquid ocean and somewhat habitable Mars, and instead describes Mars as something akin to the Ice Bowl Earth theory. Basically here, the idea is that Mars probably never really had a liquid exposed ocean. The oceans were probably always under the ice caps, or under a very thick layer of ice on the surface. And although the evidence presented is pretty strong, it's obviously not going to be a fact until we go to Mars and investigate in more detail. But first of all, how do we even know any of this? Well, a lot of this research comes from an amazing place in Canada that I'm going to try to find right now. It's an island somewhere right here known as the Devon Island. I think it's this right here, if I am not mistaken. And there you go. So this large island in Canada, in North Canada specifically, is a somewhat uninhabited, very large piece of land that's um, kind of very similar to Mars. As a matter of fact, for the past two decades, I guess most people didn't really know about this, but there was a very, very big mission, international mission, trying to roleplay what it would be like to live on Mars, to work on Mars, and to, of course, do all kinds of research on Mars. This mission is known as FMARS, or Flashline Mars Arctic Research Station, and for the past two decades, this was the primary spot for NASA astronauts and pretty much all other scientific research when it came to trying to understand Martian surface, Martian conditions, and essentially living on Mars. Because of very peculiar geology here, and because of very unusual conditions, this has been named as the most Martian-like conditions on the planet. In other words, it's like Mars on Earth. Here, using Google Earth, we can even discover where this particular research station is located. And, well, if you look at the pictures here, they do resemble Mars quite a lot. Most importantly, the scientists using the station really turned this into a science fiction-like roleplay involving everything we would use on Mars, including, of course, rovers. And even for geological experiments here, they would have to wear suits to try to simulate actual conditions on Mars. In other words, this place sounds absolutely awesome. So if anyone is in Canada and living in the station and have an extra bed for me, I'm uh, ready to come back. Anyway, this place, despite being awesome, is also a very important research facility trying to help us understand Mars by studying it here on Earth. But more specifically, we of course want to know if there ever was any life on Mars and if Mars actually looked like this, and I guess if we can make it look like this again. But this doesn't just look like Mars, it also has a lot of very, very similar features that we found on Mars as well. And this is why the scientists behind this study decided to investigate if there's actually any connection here. But first of all, let's establish what we knew about Mars before. So, for example, here, we can sort of see the outline of a potential coast or some sort of an ocean that used to probably exist on Mars. In this picture here, you can kind of see what appears to be like a backwash from a very, very large tsunami, which is related to the study I've talked about, I think, a few years ago, when we discovered that there were at least two different tsunamis happening on Mars because of a very large collision with some sort of an asteroid. We've also discovered a lot of outflow channels that do appear to be river-like, and also all sorts of stream channels as well. 
There are also a lot of actual ice deposits, water ice deposits, in, for example, here in Korolov Crater. And there are tons of other signs that do suggest some sort of liquid water activity was happening on Mars for a very long time. And a few years ago, we've even had reports of very likely deposits of liquid water underneath a relatively thick layer of Martian soil. So all of this together does suggest that Mars had liquid water. But many people assumed it looked like this. In reality, it most likely looked similar to a typical ice ball planet. Or actually, close to objects like Ganymede, one of the moons of Jupiter, or I guess in some sense other moons like Europa or Callisto. All of these objects are, for the most part, ice on the surface, but inside we believe there are actually liquid oceans. And something similar may have been happening on Mars as well. But I guess the question is how do the scientists know all of this and what led them to this conclusion? And this is really where we have to return back to Devon Island. Apparently, because we know that Devon Island, especially during the last glacial period, was for the most part under the ice, all of these structures that are formed here were formed when this whole part was covered by ice. And so all of these surface features we're seeing here were actually created by the activity underneath a very large ice sheet. And for this study, the scientists decided to compare roughly around 10,000 different Martian valleys, so the channels that I showed you previously, all kinds of different formations, and they looked at these same valleys and same channels formed here on Earth that were formed underneath the glaciers. And in this interesting image that they created, you can kind of see the comparison by yourself. The bottom here is Earth, this is the Devon Island, the top here is Mars, and there's a very remarkable resemblance between the channels on both sides. They've discovered these similarities with a lot of different channels and a lot of different formations on Mars, suggesting of course that the Martian surface may have actually resembled something like this, with the exclusion of liquid water ocean. In other words, the previous assumption that Mars had liquid water on the surface and of course that it had warm climate is now a lot less likely than a much more cold and much more unfriendly to human life Mars that's frozen and that probably doesn't even have that much of the atmosphere or anything else on the surface. And the thing is here, it's really important to understand that this idea, this hypothesis, explains a lot of things we know about Mars without needing anything extra. So for example, this would easily explain how all of these different valleys were formed on the Martian surface, even though back then the sun was actually colder, the Mars would be colder, and all of this could have been formed underneath the ice, instead of being formed in the liquid ocean with very very thick atmosphere as some of the previous studies assumed. It also means that Mars may have never had thick magnetosphere, or anything else needed to protect the atmosphere and water. All of this water could have been easily protected by a relatively thick layer of ice. And of all of these 10,000 different valleys they investigated, they realized that only a few of them could have been formed by real rivers. The majority were most likely formed by glaciers and not in the way we thought before. But most importantly, this ancient cold Mars would also give life a lot more chance as well. Today we believe that life on Earth may have kickstarted and also became a lot more resilient during the very cold period on the planet. Essentially, when Earth was the ice bowl, it's very likely that the life underneath the ice was able to survive and thrive under the ice sheet. And here, if Mars at some point also had similar conditions, then Primitive life here could have easily survived without any magnetosphere on the surface by living underneath these glaciers deep inside the Martian oceans that were probably protected by the ice shelf. Moreover, this would also mean that Mars probably had very similar conditions to early Earth, so finding life there is now even more likely than before. But I guess the next question is, what happened to all of this ice? How come it mostly disappeared except for a few craters here and there? Well, that's the question that Perseverance rover will hopefully help us answer in the next few months. And this is also probably going to be the big question many missions in the future will try to answer. Maybe most of this ice ended up inside Martian soil, and maybe most of it disappeared into the rest of the solar system. And if it disappeared into the solar system, we don't really know exactly how it happened just yet. But since in the last few months we've been discovering life in some of the weirdest places on the planet, and you can actually learn more about this in some of the previous videos, 
there is now very little doubt that we're going to find something on Mars as well. Okay, maybe there is some doubt, but the chances of finding life and primitive life and possibly life that's still thriving there is now very, very high. So this is why the next decade is going to be very exciting for a lot of different types of Martian related research. But it still doesn't change the fact that we're unlikely to transform this planet into something habitable. It's a very difficult planet to transform and we are more likely to have more luck with our other neighbor, the beautiful planet Venus. But this is something we'll discuss in some of the future videos, especially because some of the coolest missions are being planned to go to Venus as well. Anyway, so it looks like there is a lot of evidence that Mars may have been an ice bowl. An ice bowl very similar to planet Earth billions of years ago. And this is really exciting because it means that life might exist here after all. Once we learn more or once we discover more of either evidence or something to counteract this evidence, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt, and either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.